Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, we will be seeing about the topic Interim Government and the First General Elections. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into today's video. So as I have told, today's video is about the interim government and the first general elections. So let us see the topic, the interim government. Interim government. Okay. So in last video, we have studied about the Government of India Act 1940. Uh, sorry Indian Independence Act 1947 before that Government of India Act 1935 all the provisions of the acts we have seen now the interim government of India was formed on 2nd September 1946 okay 2nd September 1946 now there was an agreement for the constituent assembly and the constituent assembly the constituent assembly it was formed with 389 members okay the constituent assembly was formed with 389 members and this constituent assembly had the task of assisting the transition of India and Pakistan from British rule to independence so constituent assembly what was its duty its duty was uh, transition of India and Pakistan India and Pakistan from British rule to independence, British rule to independence, independence. This was the duty of the interim, uh, sorry, con constituent assembly that is, it had the duty of transition of India from British rule. So India was under British rule. Now India got divided and the transition of uh, India and Pakistan uh, from British rule to independence. That was the uh, main uh, task of the constituent assembly. And this constituent assembly which was formed on uh, uh, constituent assembly which was formed, it remained until 15th August 1947 okay constituent assembly uh, remained until 15th august 1947 and the assembly uh, became a sovereign body okay it became a sovereign body uh, and uh, the constituent assembly became a sovereign body and was responsible for framing the constitution the same constituent assembly if we see was responsible for framing the constitution and making ordinary laws as well okay ordinary laws as well so what the constituent assembly had the task it had the task of transition of india and pakistan uh, from british rule to independence and it remained until 15th august 1947 and the constituent assembly uh, became a sovereign body and it was responsible for framing the constitution and making ordinary laws so that was the main task of constituent assembly now after that the viceroy's executive council the viceroy's viceroy's uh, executive council viceroy's executive council transformed into council of ministers what was the viceroy's executive council got transformed into the Council of Ministers and this served as the uh, and this Council of Ministers was uh, it served as the executive branch executive branch of the interim government interim government so the viceroy's executive council got transformed into council of ministers and that council of ministers acted as the executive branch of the interim government and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Pandit Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru was the vice president, okay. He was the vice president of the council, of this council of ministers. And later he was bestowed with the powers of prime minister, prime minister, 
okay so first he was a vice president of the council and later he was bestowed with the powers of the prime minister jawaharlal nehru now after that other prominent members of the council so this council of ministers other prominent members of the council was sardar vallabhai patel sardar vallabhai patel then uh, dr b r ambedkar dr b r ambedkar etc maulana abul kalam azad all these people were the other members of the council now uh, like that interim government executive council was there then the interim government interim government had proceeded to establish diplomatic relations with other countries okay now the next uh, task of interim government it proceeded to establish diplomatic uh, relations diplomatic relations with other countries other countries and other countries including the united states so interim government now proceeded to establish diplomatic or a kind of friendly relations with other countries and the other countries means it included the united states and independent india independent independent india accepted the constitution the constitution constitution was accepted by independent india on 26 november 1949 okay so independent india accepted the constitution on 26 november 1949 and this constitution okay constitution came into effect on 26 january 19 50 so this is a very important date when the constitution of independent india came into effect it came into effect on 26 january 1950 so interim government um, entered into the proceeded for diplomatic relations with countries like us and independent india accepted the constitution on 26 november 1949 and it came into effect on 26 jan 1950 so these were the points regarding the um, uh, interim government and next we will see about the first general election so before that just let us go through the points which we have studied till now the interim government of india was formed on 2nd september 1946 the constituent assembly had 389 members and it had the task of assisting the transition of india and pakistan from british rule to independence it remained until 15th august 1947 the constituent assembly became a sovereign body and was responsible for framing the constitution and making ordinary laws as well the viceroy's executive council transformed into the council of ministers it served as the executive branch of the interim government Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru was the vice president of the council and he was bestowed with the powers of prime minister other prominent members of the council were Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel Dr B R Ambedkar Maulana Abdul Kalam Azad etc the interim government had proceeded to establish diplomatic relations with other countries including the united states independent india accepted the constitution on 26 november 1949 and came into effect on 26 january 1950 and the first general elections were be held based on the provisions of the constitution so now let us see about the first general elections so the next topic is the first general elections the time period is 1951 to 50 okay so let us see the points regarding the first general elections so india became now india became a sovereign democratic republic so now the constitution was accepted on 26 jan 1950 and india became a sovereign democratic republic after the adoption of the 
constitution on 26 Jan 1950. Okay. And general elections to the first Lok Sabha. So now the general elections had to be held um, uh, towards the first Lok Sabha was held in India from October 1951 to February 1952. This was the time period when general elections was held. So now constitution uh, that is was adopted on 26 Jan 1950 and India became a sovereign democratic republic. Now the first general elections for the first Lok Sabha was um, held from October 1951 to February 1952. And this general elections was based on universal adult franchise universal adult franchise uh, the first general elections was held in india and india became uh, emerged as a world's largest democracy world's largest democracy so india uh, emerged india emerged as the world's largest democracy and the first general elections were held and the first general election was a very uh, gigantic political experiment if you see in the history of democracy. Now the Congress emerged as the most popular political party in the country after election. So if we observe the results of the first general election from that results we can understand that Congress, Congress emerged as the most popular political party political party after the first general elections the percentage of voting the percentage of voting in the first general election was 45 percentage this proved that indian masses were politically conscious they understood the value of vote because this is a first time first general election even then the uh, percentage of voting was 45 percent which proves that the indian masses or the indian people understood the importance or the value of vote they were politically conscious and there was no relation between the percentage of votes secured by a party and number of seats won okay and the communists were popular in places now uh, i told you the congress emerged as the uh, political party and the communist the communists were popular in places like Hyderabad, Travancore, uh, Cochin, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, etc. In these places, the communists became more popular. And rural areas, rural area voting was 60% and in towns it was 40 percent so these also show the political consciousness of the people in rural area and the entire election entire first general election was held in a very peaceful manner so these things we can understand if we uh, observe the results of the election altogether if we see analyze the results of the election we can sorry Altogether, if we analyze the uh, results of the election, we can understand these points. Now, after the election, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was defeated from the Bombay constituency. In these, in the first general election, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, Ambedkar was defeated, and he was defeated from the Bombay constituency. So all these conclusions were the were uh, drawn from the first general election. Now we will see uh, uh, some of the points regarding the first Lok Sabha. So these elections were held for the first Lok Sabha. Let us see some points regarding the first Lok Sabha. The first Lok Sabha had four sorry 491 seats and elections were held for 489 seats and two anglo indian members were nominated anglo indian members were nominated so for this 489 seats elections were held 
total 491 seats. In that, for 489 seats, elections were held and balanced two seats, Anglo-Indian members were nominated. So that is how it became 491 total seats of Lok Sabha. The speaker of the first Lok Sabha was Sri G. V. Mavalankar was the speaker of the first Lok Sabha and it had met 14 sessions 14 sessions in 667 days the first lok sabha had met 14 sessions in 667 days so total 491 seats out of that 489 seats election was held and balanced two anglo indian members were nominated the speaker was sri j v mavalankar and 14 sessions were held in uh, 667 uh, days so the next point is regarding the first Lok Sabha, the highest recorded count of sitting was 3784 hours. That is the highest recorded, highest uh, recorded count of uh, sitting, count of sitting in the Lok Sabha was 3784 hours and it uh, lasted its full term for uh, a full term from 17th April. Uh, the first Lok Sabha lasted its full term from 17th April 1952 to 4th April 1957. So the full term was completed and it lasted its full term from 17th April 1952 to 4th April 1957. So these were the points regarding some of the points regarding the first Lok Sabha. Now just let us see the points once more. Okay. The first general election 1951 to 52, India became a sovereign democratic republic after the constitution was adopted on 26 January 1950. General elections to the first Lok Sabha was held in India from October 1951 to February 1952 on the basis of universal adult franchise. India emerged as the world's largest democracy. And the first general election was the most gigantic political experiment in the history of democracy. The Congress emerged as the most popular political party in the country after the elections. The percentage of voting was 45% proving that the masses in India were politically conscious and understood the value of vote. There was no relationship between the percentage of votes secured by a party and the number of seats won by it. The communists were popular in Hyderabad, Travancore, Cochin, Tamil Nadu and West Bengal. Voting in rural areas was 60% and 40% in towns. The entire election was conducted in a peaceful manner. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was defeated from the Bombay constituency and all these were the conclusions drawn from the first general election. The first Lok Sabha, it had four, 491 seats and elections were held for 489 seats and two Anglo-Indian members were nominated. The speaker of the first Lok Sabha was Sri G. V. Maulankar and it had met 14 sessions in 667 days. The highest recorded count of sitting was 3784 hours and it lasted its full term from 17th April 1952 to 4th April 1957. Now let us see some question and answers regarding the topics which we have studied. When was the interim government formed? 2nd September 1946. From which body was interim government drawn? It was drawn from the newly elected Constituent Assembly of India. Till when did it remain in office? It remained until 15th August 1947. Who was a Vice President of Viceroy's Executive Council? Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. When was the first general elections held? It was held from October 1951 to February 1952. Which country is considered as the world's largest democracy? India. Write a short note on the first Lok Sabha. The first Lok Sabha had 491 seats and elections were held for 489 seats and two Anglo-Indian members were nominated. The speaker of the first Lok Sabha was G.V. Mahulankar. It had met 14 sessions in 667 days and the highest recorded count of sitting was 3784 hours. It lasted its full term from 17th April 1952 to 4th April 1957. How many articles and schedules are there in the Act of 1935? 321 articles and 10 schedules. 
write a short note on first general election the, all the points which i have explained in this video regarding the first general election which is under the topic first general election all those points you have to write as the answer it is a five mark question so i hope you have understood all these points very clearly in case of any doubts you can ask in the comment section and also do like share and support my channel your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos so i hope to see you all soon in the coming video thank you for watching